Hey everybody, what's going on? We have finally settled on what seems to be a 100% success rate Dragons B12 team that is really not that hard to come by. Uh, you, you're, you're really not early game anymore if, you, if you're at Dragons DB12 and you're ready to start farming it. You are kind of working your way to mid game. So if you've been struggling to do this, don't be down on yourself. It's a very hard dungeon. And even though it is the next progression from, from Giants, Giants is kind of an easy problem to solve now. I've got a video on early game speed Giants as well, too. I'll card to that up there if you haven't seen it and you want to tab that up. Uh, so you will have probably needed to do that for a while before you're at this point. But these champs are not that hard to obtain, and the builds are not that insane, okay? And I'm going to talk about a couple of variations of this team. They're just not quite as safe with the gear that I have. I think if we could upgrade a little bit of the gear, which we will be able to do the longer we farm this, uh, It'll, it'll get to 100% safe, and it is quite a bit faster. You see, my, my best time there was 218, and that's with the team that we'll, that we'll talk about in a second. So uh, let's go ahead and go in and look at the members of the team, talk about the gear, what they're all contributing, and then I'll talk about a way that you can speed this up when you have the gear quality to do so, okay? The, the other version of this is... Uh, we'll talk about a couple of ways, actually, that I think you could speed this up. Um, but it's just not quite as safe for me yet. So Lapis. Lapis is actually a really important member of the team, and I think a lot of people think maybe Lapis, they give you Lapis so you can farm Faemon, and then you're kind of done with Lapis. Lapis is very good. She's got a very good kit, and she's crucial for the success of this team, okay? So let's talk about her skills and why she's so important here. Uh, her first skill attacks the enemy target two times, and then attacks all enemies with an even more powerful third attack, it decreases the enemy's attack bar by 25% every hit with a 50% chance. So she's got a 50% chance every time she hits, which is 3, to knock back turn meter by 25%. So obviously it's a flip of the coin. It's not going to be the most reliable. But in 3 hits, she's probably going to proc it at, a, at an absolute minimum once, right? And the cool thing about her is that she doesn't need skill ups for any of this to work. None of, none of her skills require skill ups to be more effective, at least not the skills that we need here, okay? Here on the A2, it's a little like mini AoE with defense down. This is not an important part of why this is successful. And then the A3 is another AoE, and she leeches HP and also absorbs attack bar. So here, as long as you have the accuracy, it's going to be fairly reliable because there's no chance to proc. And the towers, it'll almost always work on unless you get resisted. Uh, but and then if the dragon doesn't have immunity up, it'll work on the dragon. So that's potentially 75% attack bar you're absorbing, right? And again, she doesn't need this for a cooldown. We're not really building her for damage. So she's here to help with the turn meter. That's the theme of this team is turn meter mitigation. We want to prevent turns. We want to keep the dragon from getting a turn, and we really want to keep the right tower from getting a turn. If the left tower gets a turn, it's not the end of the world. Right tower, we would like to avoid getting a turn because the right tower cleanses and puts up immunity on the dragon. That's what we want to try to prevent, okay? So as lots of turn meter knockback. That's what we're doing here. Runes, we've got her on violent, and I threw her on a shield set because it was a good fill-in. You might want to go focus if you have it. You're going to be probably fairly limited on focus since you get focus from dragon. <laughs> uh, but one thing you can do is for the runes that you're going to need for this to be effective is as you go through the game, there's going to be times where you get to pick runes as a reward. If you'll pick violent, that's going to solve a lot of your problems. If, if, if you'll if you'll pick violent, violent runes on your way up, you'll be in pretty decent shape by the time you're ready to start working on this, okay? So we've got her on speed, HP, and accuracy because, again, the accuracy, accuracy is very important. And in DB12, their resistance is pretty high, so we want to have as much accuracy as possible, okay? As your rune quality goes up, you could try to go crit damage here because, again, she's not going to be taking a ton of hits, and she is water. So you could try that, but for the sake of survivability and safety, because, again, we want consistency. We don't want to be wasting energy in here. Uh, I, went, I went ahead and went HP, especially since I'm going accuracy on the last slot. Maybe later down the line, we could go speed, crit damage, and then and then you could try HP or attack or whatever you wanted to do. If you wanted to go some hybrid, you wanted to lean all the way into damage, you get more accuracy in your subs, maybe it becomes more possible. But we're talking about the first time you're doing it, I would recommend speed, HP, and then accuracy here. If you need it, otherwise, HP is fine. 
if you can get the accuracy in your subs, a focus set as a second set is going to make that a lot easier, okay? Um, as far as our stats, we've got our HP up a little bit, you know, a little over 20,000. We're not worried about the crit stats. Accuracy 97. I feel like if I could hit 100, I would. <laughs> and then you want her fast. The, the more turns she gets, the better. So as fast as you can get her on it. Uh, this is not terrible speed for a violent set, okay? So uh, if you don't have violent, you can put her on swift and then just try to get her as absolutely as fast as possible while maintaining that accuracy and some HP, okay? And then as far as artifacts go, I'm kind of just throwing on whatever I've got. I'm not, there's not a lot of super important things happening. I think this would still probably work if I took all their artifacts off, okay? I just put them on because why not? Extra stats, extra perks, you know what I'm saying? Moving right along, we've got Spectra. Now, I don't necessarily... You, you probably are going to want Spectra 2 aid for this. It's probably doable without it, but one of the things that, that Second Awakening him does is removes the HP loss, okay? I don't know if... Yeah, here he consumes 10% of his HP to do this skill, and then this is just the speed down and the turn meter knockback. When he's awakened, it's a speed down and an attack down, which is very helpful. Okay, very helpful for the waves where those crystals hit you really hard. Uh, and, and then, again, if the dragon gets a turn with this team, it's going to be because he has immunity up, so the attack down isn't really going to be helping you there. Um, but in the waves, it's incredibly helpful. So probably doable, but the gear requirement is going to be so much higher without him being 2A'd. I would go ahead and 2A him. You're going to use Spectra in quite a few places. He's well worth the 2A. And... Well, I'll do you one better. He's worth the Devil Mind. If you if you want to be super super crazy efficient and keep two Aing other ones to to skill him up that way, go for it. I was more than happy to give him the Devil Minds. The cooldown here is very very handy, and the harmful effect rate here, the extra twenty five percent harmful effect rate is pretty much mandatory here. Okay, so you if 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 you want to give him Devil Minds one at a time until you max this one, go ahead. I recommend getting it here. I unfortunately had to give him all. He he doesn't need a ton. He only needs five, so it's not like you have to unload a bunch of your Devil Mons into him. But as far as two A champs go that are worth Devil Mon, he's worth them. Okay, like for example, Sath and Tattoo. I don't think really need them. They they probably benefit a little bit from them. Spectra I think is well worth him. I don't think it's I don't think that's a bad investment at all. So you can take that information however you want to take it. I think he's well worth the Devil Mons. All right. And then again, that's what he's doing. He's knocking back turn meter. He's putting a speed down. He's putting an attack power down. The speed down is going to really alleviate the pressure on your team to knock back turn meters, right? It's going to make it a lot easier for you to continue to cycle around and knock back turn meter because you have to also consider that Lapis will occasionally be using this and there's no turn meter knock back here. So the more turns we can get her, the more times we can get her to lap around the enemies, the more time she'll use, you know, these. So the slows are really going to help there. The attack downs are really going to help with survivability in the waves when you do catch a hit. And then the cooldown here is going to be really nice because it's going to speed your run up because he's going to be getting to drop bigger hits into the dragon more frequently, okay? So as far as the runes go for him, we've gone Swift Blade, and we've gone Speed, Crit Damage, and Accuracy. And in our substats, we are looking for as much crit rate as we can get. We want that accuracy. Get him to 100 accuracy. I think that's... <laughs> it, it needs to happen. Because if he misses, if he misses the turn meter knockback, or he misses the slows, or he misses the attack downs, those can all be devastating, right? He is among the most important members of the team, if not the most important member of the team. I think, I, I think there's other ones I could probably swap out and have some success. I think if I took him out, I'm going to struggle. So... Accuracy is the top priority here. Then we want him fast. You see he's not super tanky. He doesn't really get targeted much. And you're not going to take a bunch of hits. If things go well, you're not really going to take any hits at all. But occasionally you will take a hit. But he seems to be okay, all right? And then, and then we do want crit stats. The better your crit stats, the more damage he'll do when he A2s, the faster your run, your run will ultimately be. But we don't want to sacrifice any of the other stuff for damage. Damage is going to be the thing that you start to add 
once you've hit your other thresholds and you're able to, okay? We want to hit that accuracy. We want to have some pretty solid speed. Then you can start to worry about your crit rate and crit damage, all right? He doesn't need, like, attack or anything for, for it. It's just uh, the crit stats, all right? So that's what he's doing. That's why he's important, and that's how we, we have him built. <clears throat> Moving right along, we have Lauren, another very, very important member of this team. She is ultimately the one that's going to keep the dragon from getting a turn and the Zyros in the mid wave from getting a turn, all right? Because in her passive, she's got enemy attack bar decrease with each attack, and she's always hitting multiple times. She's got a three hitter here and a two hitter here, and this is a strip. So now there's there's two different kinds of strippers in this game. There's what, there's what they refer to as smart strippers, <laughs> and then there are other ones. She is not a smart stripper. What a smart stripper means is uh, they actually put their money towards college. I'm kidding. Um, smart stripper means they won't use their strip skill unless there's a buff to strip. Megan is a, is a smart stripper. Bella is a smart stripper. So Bella won't use C's unless there's a, a buff to C's. Megan won't use toad poison unless there's a buff to remove, which means it'll always be ready when the dragon catches immunity. Lauren will use this whenever it's available, pretty much. So. Uh, she might have to go go a couple of turns before she's able to strip, which can kind of be unfortunate, right? That could kind of allow the dragon to get a turn. Um, either way, she's still very important. And again, if the run goes as planned, then it's not going to be a problem, right? She's she's going to keep the dragon's turn meter down as long as the immunity doesn't go up. And then she's also capable of getting rid of it. But again, kind of luck of the draw on if it's available on the same turn that the immunity goes up. The rest of her skills, she also has a slow here for the dragon, just to kind of back up Spectra. And then here she's got the strip and the HP recovery thing. That, that, that doesn't matter too much until we get to the variation we're going to talk about. And then here. So that's all she's doing, all right? She's, she's knocking back turn meter. So she's got 70 accuracy. She's still very reliable, even at 70. I'd probably want to spring for more, but again, she's been working kind of fine here. So we've got her, uh, I don't know, almost 30,000 HP. Uh, decent speed and then decent accuracy. You probably want to spring for more accuracy. We've got her on swift. You wanted to put her on violent even better, but you don't want to sacrifice too many of her stats to get her on violent. Okay, so keep that in mind. But speed, HP, HP. If you need the accuracy here, you can go for it. But uh, also keep in mind she is an attack champ, so her base stuff is kind of low. Scales a little bit worse, so uh, doubling up on HP worked fine for me. Okay. So that's Lapis, Spectra, Lauren. We've got Veramos here, who, again, has pretty low accuracy, but it's fairly reliable. I'm probably going to look to rework him soon and get more accuracy and stuff on him. <clears throat> Vera, there's a couple different ways we can do this. Right now, again, he's speed, HP, HP, and he's on violent. Kind of slow, pretty tanky, too low accuracy. He's probably the one I'm going to be looking to upgrade the most on the team for now because one i want more accuracy but i also want to get some crit stats on him let's talk about why he's got dots on the a1 which aren't really doing us any good because the dragon's not getting a turn all right the a2 is why he's here well the a2 and, and the passive it's an aoe that's proportionate to the enemy's max hp and a stun so he's protection in the waves if the target is not stunned decreases the attack bar of the target by 50% with a 100% chance, and then skilled up. Um, this, this stun gets better. You can't stun the towers, so every time he does this, towers are getting their turn meter knocked back. That's huge. That's why this run is 100%. Uh, the addition of him to everything else we have going on is what's making this 100%. I've tried this with several other different monsters, and I've had some success, but this is the only way I've done it that's 100% success rate, okay? He is pretty much keeping everything from getting turns <laughs> once we get to the dragon. Um, if we can get crit stats on him, his A2 can hit bigger, which would speed the run up. But again, we don't want to sacrifice any of the other stuff for the damage stats. And then if the left tower gets a turn and we catch poisons, he'll cleanse them, okay? And heal us based on what he cleansed. Now, uh, again, I would like to keep him on violent... I would like to get him a little bit faster. I would like to get some more accuracy, and I'd like to get crit stats. So there's a lot of upgrades I want to make on him, and I'm pointing them out so that if you happen to have the gear quality to do it, 
you can do it, okay? And then last, we have Verd, of course, who is going to help us turn cycle around the enemies. He is the slowest member of the team so that everybody else gets to go. He comes in behind and helps us turn cycle, and he does that with his passive. Every time he crits, increases the attack bars of all allies by 20%. Both of his skills hit twice, so if you have him on 100% crit rate, he's increasing everyone's attack bar by 40% every time he goes. And if you have him on violent, sometimes he gets multiple turns. You can see how this could get out of hand for the enemies, all right? So we went HP, crit rate, HP. So now he's very tanky. He's, it's very easy to keep him alive. He doesn't need a ton of speed because we have him as the slowest on the team. And then he needs crit rate, and that's it. He doesn't need accuracy. He doesn't need anything else. If you want to try to stack some crit damage, you can, but he has to have 100% crit rate. You need to understand, if you have him at 99% crit rate, he's going, he's going to find that 1%. <laughs> and, and the amount of runs that you're going to be doing, he's going to find that 1% kind of frequent. It's going to feel frequent, and it could be the difference maker. You know what I mean? We don't want him not cycling turn meter every time he touches an enemy. So he has to have 100% crit rate. That is the absolute top priority. Okay? Then we can get HP on him. Then we can get crit damage on him. And then just have enough speed that he's faster than the enemies, but not faster than anyone on the team. All right? That's it. None of his skills matter. It's strictly the passive that matters, and the, and the lead, to be to be fair. He's got a 28% speed lead in dungeons. That's also huge for us. We're also using that. Um, but that's, that's what he's doing, all right? Speed lead and that. And it is a little bit slow, but it's consistent, and it's nothing but six-star runes from Dragon. And Dragon drops some very important runes, as we know, right? So we want consistency. We want to expand the rune quality a little bit. And then we can start to talk about how to speed it up. So actually, if I can beat this run real quick. Let me show you the faster version. And we'll talk a little bit about the changes that I, that I want to make. All right, so let's, let's just do a single run here. So the first substitute to speed this up is crow again the, the thing here is that this is just not quite as reliable without that extra turn meter knockback that we're getting from vero it's a little bit easier for that right tower to get a turn and when that immunity goes up if lauren can't get it off in a timely fashion and the dragon gets a turn things start to get a little bit dangerous for us all right but crow helps us do everything faster crow can pump out some big damage too Crow has, well, we'll talk about Crow's kit and how he's built and why he's effective here. And then again, I'll talk about a couple of other options that I don't have built, but that I think could be pretty effective in here. Um, but Crow has the team up, which is really cool, especially when he teams up with Lapis or Verd. If we get a team up with Lapis or Verd, it's so much better than getting a team up with anyone else. Uh, because Lapis, we're going to get a little bit more turn meter knockback. Verd, we're going to get more turn meter for our team. So it, it just kind of solidifies it. Him only teaming up with one is where it, it kind of hurts, but you'll see how much faster we take the dragon down here. I hope this isn't a failed run. This seems to have about a 70 to 80% success rate right now, I would say. So hopefully this isn't going to be a failed run and you get to see what it looks like when it works. And again, I think probably a bit more speed on everyone would help us make this reliable. I don't know that tankiness is really the problem. I think, I think if we could get everyone a bit faster, maybe even just Lauren. Maybe if I could get Lauren faster or get her on a good violence set, perhaps. I don't know exactly what the issue is going to be here, but you'll you'll see. But that's a good example of, of Spectra, even at 100 accuracy, still missing sometimes. He missed the slow, but Lauren came in right behind him and helped put it up. So that was pretty nice. And now we get to stack a few debuffs up on him. And then hopefully Crow will throw that brand up soon, and you'll notice the damage really start to pour in for us. Hopefully he doesn't miss it. Yeah, we got the brand, so now the damage will be fine. I think this is a pretty safe one. This is one where they're, they're, they're pretty well in control. And this is how it goes most of the time. It might even be higher than 70 to 80% success. But I just don't like having my, my repeat battles interrupted. 
with a notification for a fail. So if I can get a 100% success rate, I'll take it. That might be a new best time. That was pretty good. 236. So we've, we've actually done it faster than that. 218 is our best time. So, ooh, I'm going to power that up now. Pretty. And focus is where I'm hurting a lot. So, so let's talk about why Crow speeds that up, all right? One, he's got a defense down on the A1. We're not really concerned with that, though. We've got Lauren, who's pretty much keeping defense down up for us. We've got Team Up. Teams up with another ally. The damage increases by 20% for each harmful effect on the enemy. And this effect also applies to the ally who attacks together. So this would be really nice when we're able to start working a bit more damage into our build. If we get, you know, if, if we focus damage a little bit harder on Lapis while maintaining everything else we need to maintain. Or on, on Verd, for example, if we start, uh, you know, squeezing some damage into his build. When he teams up with them, that would be particularly nice because that's so much bonus damage for all the debuffs we're getting, right? We've got... Defense down, we've got dots, we've got heal block, we've got attack down, we've got slow, we've got brand. Uh, we've, we've got a lot of ways to increase this damage with Crow on the team, right? So if we team up with anyone that, that stacks damage, preferably Lapis, I would say, honestly, for the turn meter knockback on that tower. But either way, uh, lots of potential there. And then on the A3, we've got the brand, and then the damage increases by 50% for each harmful effect on the enemy. So the second time he uses this, potential for huge damage, right? He's already got the brand by the second time he uses it, there's a lot of debuffs. You saw the big damage toward the end of the fight that he dropped with it. Uh, that's that's why he's able to speed it up so much. Okay, I think I think having this last slot with team up champs could be very helpful. I think I think the team up here is is a big part of it, and then again, this is a big part of it. The the hard part can be where if we if we just get bad team ups every time, sometimes that right tower goes a little bit too long untouched. And it sneaks in a turn, the dragon gets immunity, and then it's a matter of if Lauren is prepared to strip it off. Because if the dragon gets a turn, we're in trouble. We're not a very tanky team. We're not really designed to take the hit. The whole point of the team is to keep the dragon from getting the turn. If the dragon gets that turn, <laughs> uh, we're, in, we're in trouble, usually. Sometimes towards the end, he'll get a turn, and we're able to still kind of get through it. But if, he, if, if, he, if he's got like any more than like you know a fifth of his HP left, we're, we're struggling. All right, so I think Crow is a great option. I just need to get the gear quality up a little bit, probably just the speed. I think another really solid option could be... Probably the best way to do it is in here. Could be 2A Crow. And not, not regular Crow. I don't think Crow could do it because Crow teams up with another ally to attack an enemy and has a defense down. Um, he's basically less good Crow. Have I been saying Crow the whole time? I meant Rauk. <laughs> I think I've called him Crow a couple times. That's my bad. I think Rauk could be a good member of the team, but Rauk has to be 2-8 because here he's just less good Crow is what I was trying to say. 2-A Rauk teams up with two other allies, which increases the likelihood that we get that Lapis or Verd team up, okay? So I think that could be really handy. And then... um. And then again, probably also pretty helpful on waves, depending on how, how hard you can get him hitting. But I think the, the double team up could be very handy here, on top of the fact that Rao can pump out some damage. All right. I think some other options, I was looking at some other ally attack options that I think perhaps could stand in for Vero and potentially make it a little bit quicker. Uh, she's got a pretty good team up. It's on a long cooldown, though, but a four turn cooldown skilled up. She, she Three randomly selected allies will attack an enemy target. That could be pretty nice. Uh, I'm not sure. I would I would probably want to practice with this before I would like fully recommend it. I think the fire ele elephant also has a team up, but I would I would honestly stick with Crow or Rauk if you're looking for the faster version of this team. If you're looking for the safe version of this team, it's Vero. And I'm going to work to try to get some crit stats on Vero and see how fast we can get it with him because if we can keep it that safe and speed it up. Even better, right? If, if I can get this down to like around the same time I'm doing with Crow, but have Vero instead and guarantee the safety, that's going to be the ideal way to do it. So maybe we'll do an updated video on this team at some point in the near future as my gear here gets better. But for now, I'm probably going to stick with this because, again, I want the consistency in the run. So 
Uh, that's it. Kind of a longer in-depth video, but it's a tough dungeon. So hopefully that helps you out. It probably gives you a little bit of a project if you haven't 2 a Spectre yet, if you haven't 2 a Crow. Uh, maybe you want to try to 2 a Rauk and see if you can make it work that way. We'll, we'll as, as we, you know, progress the account and get more at our disposal, we'll do more variations of this. But I think it's a pretty obtainable team. None of the gear's crazy. And, again, kind of a slow run with Vero, but safety over speed for now. We want, we want consistency and get that rune quality up, and then we can start to worry more about speed. And ultimately, we're all working towards uh, Tricaru anyway, so. That's it. Hopefully this was helpful. I know it was kind of a long one, but a uh, lot to talk about there. So if you have any other tips you want to drop below, as always, please do so. I'm sure everybody else would appreciate it. I would as well if you have any other tips that, uh, that maybe I haven't heard before. So that's it. I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you later.